Welcome to Automotive Linux Summit. It's so great to be here. Um, AGL has come a long way. Uh, we've been uh, making uh, the AGL unified code base distribution now for eight years. It's amazing how fast things have come. But uh, for those that are not familiar with AGL, just to give you a high level, uh, we're, of course, uh, an open source collaborative project hosted at uh, Linux Foundation. We're 100% focused on in-vehicle software. So that means infotainment, instrument cluster, heads-up display, telematics. They all use the same base software. We use Yocto for this. And so infotainment is the superset with all the packages and then the rest, you know, you can remove packages and support and customize things as you wish. We're also working with Elisa on functional safety, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, and also on uh, various ADAS applications. So the goal of AGL has always been to uh, really unify the industry on one software base. Um, if you uh, go back several years, there was QNX, there was Microsoft, there was proprietary operating systems. There was also Linux, but different flavors of Linux, meaning each tier one vendor had their own flavors of Linux. And the idea of AGL came along and to really unite uh, all of these software packages into one distribution that we like to characterize as 70 to 80% of the starting point of a production project. Um, this has been uh, quite a success. There's a lot of uh, uh, car manufacturers and tier ones using AGL today. Um, but we've evolved beyond that these days also. We're now hosting individual components uh, from various uh, specifications, meaning that um, you know someone will contribute code that meets some specification. And a good example of this is the Kuxa vehicle signaling. Um, this is hosted at AGL. So we're now also the host of components, meaning that if you don't need the entire AGL distribution, you can also uh, pick and choose the components you need for your project. And we're, we're really proud of that evolution uh, because it makes complete sense. Uh, we're proud to have nine major manufacturers supporting the project, including uh, most of the big ones from Japan, including Honda, Nissan, Suzuki, Toyota. We have Mercedes and Volkswagen from Germany, uh, SAIC in China, and Hyundai in South Korea. So this represents quite a bit of vehicles in the world uh, in terms of uh, the number of vehicles manufactured by uh, these automakers. Um, I want to say a big thank you to our board of directors. I'm sure you recognize these names. These are not small companies. We've got uh, Aishin, Amazon AWS, Denso, Mazda, Panasonic, Renaissance, Suzuki, and Toyota. And with their support, uh, we are the diamond sponsors of this event, uh, Automotive Linux Summit. Uh, so I want to thank uh, all of these board members for their support. And maybe we'll see Honda uh, sometime on our board in the future, we hope. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, let's talk about the software. So I mentioned already uh, UCB. So we started uh, UCB uh, eight years ago, 2016. Um, we named it UCB uh, to indicate to the world, it means unified code base, really to indicate to the world that we want to consolidate all of this software that is useful for automotive, which was various packages all over the open source world, and consolidate them on a single platform for people to use. Um, this year, we've made two major releases. Uh, we name our releases after fish. Uh, this is a fun thing we do, thanks to Walt Miner, my colleague. Uh, Quirky Quillback was released in February. This was a major release, um, probably one of the most impactful releases we've had in the last couple of years. Um, first of all, we introduced a brand new user interface based on Flutter. Now, Flutter is an open source project that was originally developed by Google, but it was really made for tablets. And uh, Toyota decided to use Flutter in their production projects. And so they basically modified Flutter to make it automotive specific, contributed all of that code back to AGL, which is over a million lines of code. And so AGL is now the home of what I'd like to call embedded automotive Flutter. And we think this will become the de facto standard for the industry. We know that there's already uh, a few other large OEMs, including uh, some in Europe, that are using Flutter in their R&D as we speak. Um, the other cool thing is we introduced RISC-V support for the first time. 
Um, we believe that this is the first automotive specific platform to support RISC-V architecture. So that's really cool. And we hope to see more boards in the future from different manufacturers uh, and add more support to this uh, as RISC-V evolves. And then finally, we also added support for Amazon AWS Graviton. This is an ARM64 based cloud processor. And the reason why this is cool, it means that developers, especially community developers, can now uh, write AGL software, test AGL software, while sitting at a cafe with their laptop. Um, you can connect to the cloud, you can do a lot of development without needing physical hardware. And so this is a fantastic option, and uh, we hope to see a lot more community developers using this option. And in fact, my colleague, Jan Simon, will be giving a talk about uh, related to this later today. Um, we also introduced Royal Ricefish. Um, <laughs> And uh, Royal Ricefish, uh, we uh, made updates to Yocto, we made updates to uh, Flutter, uh, we made several updates to vehicle signaling, uh, but yet another cool option is we added support for Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, this is an inexpensive board that any developer can buy for you know, relatively cheap, and it really allows another option to run and test uh, AGL. Okay, so I wanna switch gears and talk about software-defined vehicles. Um, there's been a lot of hype. SDV is the big buzzword in the industry. Everybody's talking about it. I even gave an interview uh, a few months ago to a magazine or a media, you know, online media, and they couldn't figure out what SDV meant. So, <laughs> so we're going to try to define what SDV means. Um, one thing though, AGL has been working on SDV for uh, over eight years, nine years. We just didn't know it because the term had not been coined yet, but everything we were working on was actually SDV related. One of the key things about SDV that we're gonna see in the automotive industry, I believe, is that we're gonna have the consolidation of functions from ECUs, on ECUs. So today, a luxury vehicle can have 100 ECUs. These are processors. They have all these functions. You have tens of millions of lines of code uh, distributed across all these ECUs. In many cases, some of these ECUs run similar software stacks with same code. So if you find an issue somewhere, you have to fix it in multiple places. It's a big pain. One of the things that SDV can do is we can consolidate multiple functions on more powerful processors. One of the trends is that uh, the processors that are coming out are multi-core, they have performance cores, efficiency cores. Um, the, these processors did not exist just five years ago. So the power of these processors means that you can do things like run instrument cluster, infotainment, heads up display, side by side on the same processor using a virtualized environment and using containers. And AGL has been doing this. We've been demonstrating this for years and the technology is already there to be able to do this. Another really good promise about SDV is that today, when you want to update the software from version one to version two, it's literally, you have to recompile the entire software, re-download it to the car, and most of the time, it's not over the air, not yet. Now, of course, some manufacturers are starting to do that. It's great to see. Um, this is, again, a really big pain to manage for an automotive supplier. With SDV, it's possible to update individual applications. Now that could be a single application in a container, or it could be a bigger uh, environment, like your entire uh, application user space. And the ability to do this is there today. So with uh, a proper hypervisor, with a proper vert IO, which is the virtualized IO, and the containerized applications, you're able to update individual applications today. And what this means is really SDV is about car manufacturers rethinking how to treat the car. The car has been traditionally treated as an embedded device. I've been in embedded Linux software for 20 years. And we really have to start thinking more of the car like an endpoint, like a server. Now, servers may be not the right word, but 
really, we have to start using the tools that have been used in networking and in other industries, in the cloud, and really start to manage the software in the car in a similar fashion. AGL has 100 million lines of code. Managing that software is complex. It's getting really complex. You have to update frequently. You have to fix security bugs. We have to start managing the software differently. And I think one of the biggest promises for SDV is that today you have um, multiple model years of vehicles. So let's say, you know, from 2015, 16, 17. And the hardware changes over time. Um, the problem with the industry today is in most cases, car manufacturers have different software versions for each of those hardware versions. This has to stop because it's madness to manage software this way. Imagine a world where the car is like an iPhone. What I mean by this is this is an iPhone 15. It runs the same iOS version as my iPhone 8. But in the car world, that's not the case. And we need to get there, where if we abstract the, the hardware in a proper way, we should be able to use the same exact software image on multiple model years of vehicles without having to manage individual VIN numbers and individual um, uh, uh, processors on a given older model. So this, to me, is one of the biggest promises of SDV. So just to summarize a few use cases. You can run instrument clusters side by side with infotainment. For car manufacturers that have uh, adopted Android, no problem. You can run AGL instrument cluster side by side with Android. And one of the reasons for that is the vert IO layer is the same for both. Um, it was developed by, predominantly by Panasonic. They've done a lot of contributions in this area. And they worked on both Android and uh, AGL. And then finally, you can do both those things, and you can also add ADAS and RTOS support, and you can do functional safety critical things side by side. So for example, lane departure warning, ADAS type of applications could be run on the same environment. The nice thing about all this is that this is not science fiction. The code exists today, the infrastructure exists today. It's up to car manufacturers and their suppliers to architect these systems using this technology. I want to talk about a few other key AGL developments. Today, we're really, really proud to announce the formation of the AGL Open Source Program Office. Um, this has been in the works for several months. Uh, the, uh, OSPO, as we call it, is being led by Toyota. Uh, we have participation from Honda, Mazda, Suzuki, Nissan. We hope to get participation from others like Mercedes, Volkswagen, Volvo, Ford. Um, the goal is really to define uh, and document mechanisms to make it easier for car companies to contribute code to AGL and to open source in general. Um, car companies you know, historically have been quite risk averse. <laughs> they have very large departments of lawyers and, and so on. We have to teach them, we have to teach car companies how to contribute to open source, specifically to AGL. And there are a lot of automotive specific things that will come out of this. So we will document best practices, document how to deal with licensing, IP, and issues like that and document how to build a code contribution process inside your company. And the idea is to have car companies and suppliers easily turn this on and uh, be able to have their engineers contribute uh, to open source. Uh, another uh, interesting thing happening is we're uh, incubating a project called uh, EV charging. Um, there's another project at Linux Foundation called um, LF Energy. And they're working on a software stack for charging stations called Everest. And there's a lot of interest in this in Europe. Um, the European regulatory agencies really want the EV charging infrastructure to be open uh, and standardized. And so the thing missing here is though, you need something in the vehicle to talk to these charging stations, decide you know, uh, what charging protocol, what uh, uh, amount of energy that's to be charged, et cetera. And 
so that portion needs to be hosted somewhere. And our thoughts is that this will be hosted at AGL. So we're kind of incubating this now. We're talking to several companies and trying to drum up interest. So if you're interested in this area for your company, please come see me. Uh, and then another thing that's really interesting for this crowd, uh, AGL is collaborating with METI. METI is the Ministry of Econ uh, Economy, Trade and Industry of Japan. Uh, they recently announced a mobility digital transformation strategy and they approached AGL and so now we're in discussion with them. And the aim is really to help the uh, automotive manufacturers of Japan and also to uh, increase the software talent in uh, AGL based platform in Linux uh, uh, and open source based platforms uh, in Japan. And so one of the key opportunities we have here is that uh, there's no formal definition of SDV, and METI would like us to help them define what SDV means. So we have a critical opportunity here to be able to actually define the word SDV and what it means for uh, the industry and specifically for the Japanese car industry. Just a quick few more things. Uh, we just had our AGL uh, all-member meeting in uh, Germany, uh, that was in July. Um, we always have a lot of fun, you should really join us uh, next time. This is the team and the board dinner. <laughs> uh, and I just want to mention that um, our next uh, AGL all-member meeting will be here in uh, Tokyo, February 26, 27. Uh, the CFP and the registration is open, so we'd like to see you there. Please, please join us, this will be at the Hilton Shinjuku. Um, our next event after that will be AGL at Embedded World in Nuremberg. We do this show every year, we have a booth. Uh, it is completely free for members to participate in our booth. So please, uh, if you're interested, check out our website, uh, the events website, and there'll be a, a CFP for participating. And then our next all member meeting will be also in July 9 and 10 in uh, Berlin. Um, and it'll be at the same venue, the Double Tree Berlin. July 9, 10. And another Japanese event that we're participating in, we'd like to see you there, is the SDV Forum X. Um, this is a collaboration with Jaspar. Uh, this will be September 17, 18, 19 next year. Uh, and it'll be uh, at the uh, Makuhari Messe uh, near Chiba. And then also at the end of the year next year, we'll have Automotive Linux Summit again. Uh, the dates and location have not been uh, set yet. Uh, and then with that, I just want to highlight a few sessions that are going to happen today. If you want to learn more about AGL and the roadmap and UCB, et cetera, in way more detail than I had time to talk about here, please go see Walt Miner's session at 11.15. Uh, if you want to learn more about AGL in the cloud and, and running on AWS that I mentioned earlier, go see Jan Simon's session at uh, 2.50 p.m. And then finally, if you want to learn more about software-defined vehicles, SDV, please go see Jerry Zhao's session from Panasonic at 12.05 uh, uh, p.m. today. This is just to name a few. We will also have sessions on OSPO, um, and we welcome you to attend those as well. So with that, I just want to remind everyone that AGL is code first. We've always been code first. I've been saying that for eight, nine years now. And uh, we're really uh, proud of the progress that AGL has made. And that's all thanks to you, your contribution, and the amazing community, especially in Japan. So thank you very much.